You may have heard a story about English orphans being sent to Canada to have better lives. Most of it is just a story, it's not even true. If it were true, you would have read about it in elementary school, high school, and university. But this story is conspicuously absent from our curriculum. My name is Perry Snow. I'm the author of a book entitled Neither Waif Nor Stray, The Search for a Stolen Identity. My father was one of the 150,000 children deported to Canada for over the last 100 years to work as indentured farm laborers, also known as slaves. He was illegally and forcibly apprehended by the Church of England Society for providing homes for waifs and strays. When he was apprehended, he never saw his family again. Like so many of the hundreds of thousands of children, they never saw their families again. Once in care, they were orphanized, convinced their parents were dead, and sold to Canadian farmers for $2 a head. They worked as indentured farm laborers and domestic servants until they were 18 years old. The vast majority never saw their families again. Their identities were stolen from them. They were implanted with a new one as an orphan. There are many myths surrounding the scheme that persist today, and my book highlights the many, many myths and the untruths of this scheme. For almost 100 years, the British Child Care Organization sent 150,000 children to Canada, not to give them better lives, but to sell them to Canadian farmers for $2 a head. They were imported by the Department of Immigration. The common factor to all these children were, one, they never spoke of their experiences while in care, and they went to their graves with their secrets. The other common factor is, once in care, they never saw their families again. This was a deliberate policy of the sending organizations. The unspoken motive was to save these children from their families and irrevocably and permanently sever all family ties. The end result to the unspoken motive is people lived their lives not knowing who they were. Their names were taken from them, their identities were taken from them, and a new identity supplanted as they were branded Waifs, Strays, Bernardo Boys, Bernardo Girls. And it still persists. My father was one of them. He was sent to Canada, indentured on farms, cut loose when he was 18 to fend for himself. Unprotected by the Canadian government who bought them and resold them to farmers. I wrote a book about my father's experiences because he did talk about his past as best he could, even though he couldn't say much. As he was apprehended, taken by police, put in a foster care, put into a orphanage, branded as an orphan, and sold to work on farms. He spent 60 years of his life writing to one organization, the Church of England Society for Providing waifs and strays homes. For 60 years, they lied to him, withheld information, and he died as he lived, not knowing who he was. I inherited the search for his stolen identity, and I got jerked around by the waifs and strays society as well. It took me a good three years to get his case file. Everything he wanted to know was on his admittance form. One piece of paper that's over a hundred years old now. It said who his parents were. It said he had a brother. But they didn't really provide that information readily to me. I had to press for three years and they tried lying to me that they had no records, they didn't know anything about his family. It's been a hundred years of a litany of lies, and it's got to be highlighted. 
in the beginning their motives might have been to save poor little orphans living on the streets of England in the 18th century. But that does not justify their actions over the next 60 or 80 years, and it does not justify their actions about withholding family information from legitimate inquirers. It's gone on so long with the complicity of the Canadian government that we are now working on second, third generations. As I sought my, to reclaim my father's stolen identity, grandchildren, great-grandchildren are looking for great-grandparents and getting nowhere. Because the organizations claim they are not obliged to release information other than to the home children themselves. They are almost all gone, like people who served in World War I. Somewhere in the next year or so, the last home child will be dead and have taken their secrets to their graves. Sons and daughters will start a search that will take years, cost a fortune because of what fees are being charged by these organizations. They are exorbitant, a couple hundred dollars per file. If elderly people like myself, first generation, are not going to come up with thousands of dollars to get three or four records from three or four organizations. I think our Canadian government, who financed this, paid the organizations at least $80 million when they purchased children. Have a responsibility to help the descendants of these kids find their families.